This is the third part of uh, today's lecture uh, on section 2.3. Uh, while I had this pause moving to this one, I did a little reorganizing, so uh, this may not look quite the same as what we uh, last saw, but it would be very similar. Okay, we're talking about the uh, squeeze theorem. And again, we're saying that we have a function that is, uh, and again, remember, these are outputs. The outputs of a function f are greater than the outputs of h of x, function h, and are less than the outputs of the function g for all x in the open interval containing c. So anything that we're, where x is going to be approaching c, except possibly c itself. So here again, we say maybe we can't use, maybe we can't put c into the function, but it's true. this is true for everything up to and including that. Um, this is true, if this is true, and if uh, we have this situation that, um, let me move this line out of the way. I uh, have the situation then that the limit of the function h as x approaches c is equal to l, and the limit of function g is also. So the outputs of h and the outputs of g as x approaches c, those outputs are equal. Okay. Our conclusion to this then is that the limit of our function f of x also exists and is also then equal to L. So if f of x outputs are between those of h and g and the limit of the outputs of h as we approach c is the same thing as the limits of g then f takes on the very same values for that. Now, to illustrate this, what I want you to do is we're going to open up a new problem. So let's take the inspires. And um, remember, to do a, a new problem, uh, we're going to I'm going to go back to the, our, cal, our gray one here. We're going to go into uh, control home and insert and insert a new problem. That was, that was control home and then go to insert and then insert a new problem. And we're going to insert a, um, a graphs page. Now, for function f of, f of 1 or f1 of x, so let's put these down. For f1 of x, we're going to use the absolute value of x. For f2 of x, we're going to use the opposite of the absolute value of x. And for f3 of x, we're going to use a function of x times sine x x times sine x. Okay, what we want to do is to look at the limit as this function, f3 of x, as x approaches 0. So let's go back to the inspires and let's put that in. Um, in order to find our absolute value, again, you can on this model we can do control multiplication and here in the second row, first item is absolute value. And we'll have the absolute value of x and press enter. Now, we've lost our entry line. All we have to do is to press tab and that entry line comes back. And for this one, we want to have the opposite of, and we can go in here again and do control on the multiplication pick up the absolute value and press X and enter. Okay, for those of you working on the uh, touch screen, let me go back and remind you of some things. To get a new, a new page, excuse me, a new problem, if we just press document and come down to insert, we can do a new problem that way. So if you were just a little bit behind, that's how we would do that document. Just press document and go into insert and insert a new problem. Uh, for you on the uh, touch screen, uh, to get to the template palette, uh, all we do is press the key right here. Okay, 
not wanting to leave anyone behind. Um, let's again, on this one too, we've lost our entry line, so we just press tab. And what we want to insert here is X. And uh, it's never a bad idea to go ahead and put in the multiplication sign. And to uh, press then on this model, to press trig, and we come up with all of the trig uh, functions, including the inverse ones, and sign X. Now, if you're on the uh, gray model, um, to get sign, we have the we have the sign key right here and the inverse is control on sign. Okay, so we'll press enter and there is our function. Now, I'm going to capture that and we're going to insert it over here. Okay, um, if we look at this now, and I have this so that we can really see F3 of X in bold, the, um, the top curve, this one right here, this inverted, this V is our F1 of X, um, the F2 of X is the one right here. And so is it true that all of the outputs of f of 3 are between f1 of x and f2 of x? So if I put a point, is that output value between the corresponding point on f1 and f2? And the answer is yes. For any of these, the answer is going to be yes. f3, the outputs of f3, are going to be between the outputs of f1 and the outputs of f2. Same thing over here between F1 and F2. So now, if we are looking at uh, the limit as X approaches zero of the absolute value of X, well, as X approaches zero from both directions um, of the absolute value of X, the answer is zero. If we look at the limit as x approaches 0 of the opposite of the absolute value of x, that's f2, the outputs are approaching 0. Because we've got that um, f3 of x, outputs of that lie between f1 f1 of x less than or equal to and less than or equal to f2 of x, the outputs, and we have the limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of uh, the absolute value of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of the opposite of the absolute value of x, both of those being 0. Therefore, and it's obvious with our graph then, therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of x times sine x is also then going to be 0. That's how we use that squeeze theorem of in the problem. And this is an example. Okay, well, let's go on to um, another theorem. Again, we've got a lot of theorems here, so uh, we are going to be discussing them and using them, but uh, in this case we're not going to, we're going to accept these without proof at this point. Accept without proof. Um, go without proof at this point. Okay, um, but let's take a look at these. Now, this the difficulty we have with this, and again we can use the squeeze theorem to help us out with these, 
But uh, I'll just mention that using the squeeze theorem, we can see these. But uh, these theorems, these uh, limits, the limit of sine x divided by x as x goes to 0 is going to be 1. We're going to be using these, so we need to know where these are. You might want to, if you have the ebook, highlight these and bookmark the highlight. Uh, if you don't have the ebook, uh, put some kind of a tab on it so you remember where these are. The limit of 1, mi uh, one minus cosine x divided by x as x goes to zero, is zero. Notice we can't just say that we're using direct substitution because um, we have uh, a dividing a division by zero that, in that case. So uh, we're just going to accept these without proof. Uh, this is our uh, statement that um, allows us to see a definition of the value of e. So e is defined as allowing uh, x go to zero of one plus x raised to the one divided by x power. And again, we're going to accept these uh, without proof. Now, let's go back, do a little bit of a review here. Uh, when we are trying to find limits, one thing we want to do, and uh, the most important thing is, to recognize when we can use direct substitution. Well-behaved functions, polynomial functions, the transcendental functions, um, rational functions, uh, as long as we don't have a, de a denominator of zero, and so forth. Uh, find that if the limits of the function as x approaches c cannot be evaluated, uh, try finding a function that agrees with it at every other point except possibly at that value c. That's the same thing as uh, our theorem 2.7. Let's go back and see what that was again. Theorem 2.7, functions that agree at all but one point. So uh, that's what we're talking about. Um, in this area. And then we can always use a table, a graph, use our Inspire to help us uh, with that. Okay, now comes the time when we just work some problems out. So we're going to um, attempt to, um, to work these problems and uh, let's see what we can come up with. I'm going to pause this. In fact, okay, so let's work on this. Uh, obviously, we are not able to um, use direct substitution on this problem. And so we're going to have to rewrite it. x approaches negative 1. We can't use direct substitution because that would turn out to be um, a 0 denominator. So we will attempt to factor this one and it turns into the factors of 2x minus 3 and um, x plus 1. Uh, we see that we have factors that we can cancel and so we're able then to look at the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2x minus 3. We now are able to use direct substitution. We drop the instruction where we we will take the limit at this point the minute we take we use direct substitution and our answer is negative 5. You can verify that on the Inspire uh, if you wish. Um, we'll go on to the next problem. Um, again, a problem that we cannot use direct substitution on because it would give us a zero denominator. Uh, it is not factorable as we were looking at it. Uh, we're now going to have to use some tools that we have gathered uh, in previous mathematics classes. Um, they uh, are going to be this whole idea of rationalizing it, but not the denominator, the numerator. Now I'm going to uh, pause this, stop this, and we'll start again on the next segment.